I can't believe I found you again, my old foe. Still, I guess I should start with the disclaimer. It has been years since I read you. So, maybe it's not so bad, what I'm about to talk about. Maybe, just maybe, you aged like fine wine. But I will not be looking at you again to see, because you are a thief. But, but Lena, look, you read it on Kindle. It was free. Yes, yes it was. And while we're on that, it being free was still too much. But I'm not talking about them stealing my money, no. I can get that back. They stole my time. They wasted my time with this book. This terrible book. So, I'm going to dissect it for a second. Let's talk about pacing. You don't have it. This is from a girl who avoids the filler like the plague. If I think the pacing is bad, it's bad. Pacing is incredibly important to me. And if I can't handle that, Whew. Everything happened. So quickly. The story begins with the main girl getting her family slaughtered by, what was it, demons? I don't remember. It was, it was the villain. She got over that incredibly quickly. Then she met, not even the main character, like, who was he? The main character's brother, the main character's friend. She met some hot demons in a different world. I don't know how she got to the world. That's not important. What is important, and I know this because the author literally always had to stop the story to bring it up, was that whenever she got turned on by how hot these demons are, they always, always had to just stop. Because they could smell it, you see. They, they could smell her arousal and then just look at her for like, I don't even know, a, a minute, an hour? I don't know. But they did it all the time, whenever she got turned on. And she was horny, and apparently she was the only horny girl in this entire world because they kept acting like it was a phenomenon. Like, d d they were basically just hot, super strong humans. D d did all the girls just not get turned on? Were they just that unsatisfying? Anyway, moving on. She meets the demon prince. <sighs> yeah, he he's terrible. We'll get back to that. And for her to go back to her own world, they have to go on a quest. A and this is... Probably one of the most infuriating parts. The skeleton of the story is good. Going to a different world, being accompanied by a prince, not getting along with each other, but having to go on this trip together and collect things. Those things including a griffin egg, the skill of a water dragon, and one other thing that escapes me. That could have been such a good story in the hands of the right Arthur. It would have been fantastic. But no, we got like, what, three pages? She met the griffins, she got the egg, woohoo. She went to the dragon, he could like turn into a hot guy and like stole her. I don't know if he wanted to marry her, but I know the prince came and saved her and he like gave her up and, and gave him the scale. And then there was the other st whatever else they had to do, even if there was another one. Anyway, that's all happens like incredibly quickly, like what should have been the majority of the book. It goes by pretty quickly, but it is a short book, so I will give them that. That is a good excuse. But, um, they use everything she collected to make a bird. It's supposed to take her to another world. Back to her home world, I mean. And guys, I, I don't know what happened to this bird. We see it when it's created. It's mentioned when she's playing with it for a bit. And then it's gone. If she returns to her home world, at the end of the book, spoiler alert, and if the bird helped her, I don't remember it, because I like distinctly remember thinking, where is that bird? They just dropped the bird from the story. Anyway, they go back to the, the demon kingdom, and they're hanging out there. The demon queen likes her. I think she wants her son to marry her. I'm not totally sure. But the point is, he has some allies and he has to marry a hot sister over there if he wants to keep the peace. And this is around the point where we realize the prince is a terrible fucking creature. He is an asshole. An irredeemable asshole in my opinion. Um, <laughs> and I know character love interests can start as assholes. That's fine. That, that gives room for character development. But by the this book is at 80% complete. 
completed now. He's very clearly starting a relationship with her. I need more, and he just did some fucked up things. The first thing was that he wasn't one of his allies. He had two sisters and had two daughters, and he was supposed to marry one of them to keep the peace. And um, so he he was like, no. He was like, okay, I'm, they're just come just just come to my room, girls. We'll just, mm, just try a little bit of hanky panky, see what happens. So, yeah. Which wouldn't bother me that much. I, I can understand it. He has to do it to keep the kingdom. But then he just... He makes the sisters go down on each other, man. I had to read some incest. Because he thought it would turn them on. It didn't. So he just, like, leaves those two girls there. Like, oh, you, you performed this little act. Um, but uh, that didn't uh, that didn't get me going, so... Bye. And he goes to make out with um, the main girl. And then it gets worse. He refuses to marry them. So he's going to dump them on his either his cousin or his friend. Like one of the few loyal people he had. Just a good person. He was already in love. He was in love with the girl. And the prince made him abandon the love of his life to marry one of these sisters after he made them commit incest. That is a terrible thing for a character to do and I honestly don't even know if he's sorry about it. Characters can do awful things but I feel like there is a line and he's crossed it and I don't think he feels bad about crossing it. I don't even think he feels bad about it. Alright and then um and then a lot of things are blank. I just remember she somehow gets home whether it's the little magic bird or not I don't know. But it just ends on a cliffhanger, and the prince arrived at her world somehow, and he was like, do you really think you get rid of me that easily, or something? It's supposed to be a happy cliffhanger. I don't know. It was it was really annoying then. Because I, I wasn't happy about that. <laughs> then, what, what else is there to pick apart about it? I'll pick apart the little short story. Well, it wasn't a short story, it was like a sneak peek of another story. And I'll admit, I don't know everything about this. Maybe the girl in this was, um, was a demon slayer and knew things. But, um, she basically just told this one demon off. Um, here, no, here's the thing. She was out swimming naked in some little pond, because I guess people in the 21st century still do that. I don't know. That's not important. A guy comes up. There was the main demon character. He's been watching her do that. I guess it's not creepy. I don't know. Then um, uh, this, guy, this other stranger guy, we don't know him, he comes up and wants to rape the girl and the demon guy comes over, tears his heart right out of his chest. And the girl is so fucking chill about nearly getting attacked and then witnessing that. And from what I could tell, again, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm missing something. She might have seen shit like that before. She might be in the demon slaying or just fighting bad guy business. But from what I'm getting gathered she was just a regular girl and she was totally okay with the acts of violence that just befooled it before her eyes. She was all snarky and sarcastic about it. And that really bothers me. That happened in one other book I've read from a writer I really like whose name escapes me. I couldn't finish this book because it was just had this regular everyday woman getting into the supernatural situation and not treating it like it was a supernatural situation. You can treat it like a bad thing, like a dangerous, scary thing, because it is. You acting like it's no big deal and worrying about your shoes and stuff. You break it, you buy it, she actually said. That's so irritating. But anyway, I'm getting off topic. Back to the first book of demons. I can't think of anything. Well, let me think. I don't believe there's anything worse going on. There was this one other character. He was supposed to be a villain and got like... What's the word when you get your genitals cut off? Because that's what happened to him. I think he was a traitor or something. I don't know. I know the main girl felt bad about it for him. And honestly, I would have preferred him to become the love interest. This villain traitor dude. I don't even know who he was. He, he was more likable. So yeah. I didn't have fun. This was a short, very free book. But it took too much from me. And I can only think of one other book that's just as bad as this. But it's a very simple thing. It's a very simple reason why that other book's terrible. And I'll just leave it at this. 
the, that book, I don't remember its name, but that book did a worse disservice to vampires than Twilight.